Hello everyone, here I'm going to report on our recent work which revealed neural group clustering of structure adolescent brain development. As we all know, adolescence is a critical period for brain reconstruction and maturation. The two studies on the left have shown that adolescents exhibit remarkable heterogeneity in structure neurodevelopment. Many studies have also found a relationship between changes in brain volume and people's cognitive functioning and behaviors. On the right, it was a study exploring the genetic overlap of structural brain changes with some traits. Inspired by growth mixture modeling, we classed 1,543 adolescents with at least two scans imaging and characterized these groups. This is the first study utilized to follow up three data of imaging. To investigate how genes and environment factors influence the classroom results, we use a genome-wide association study and epigenome-wide association study. Finally, we wish to know whether different brain development patterns in the lesson may influence mental well-being and the socioeconomic outcomes in mid to late adulthood. We utilize UKB data. Here are the three groups we identified. Figure A showed the estimated total gray matter volume developmental curves of groups. As we can see that group 1 and 2 both had more than 45% of the adolescents with continuously decreasing total GMV. Compared to group 1, group 2 had lower baseline value and a slower rate of decrease. The remaining 45% of the major participants belong to group 3. They had the lowest baseline total GMV, which surprisingly increased. This was opposite to the population developmental trend. We expanded the curves by incorporating participants aged 22 to 38 years old in HCP young adults. And as we can see, a delayed neurodevelopment and brain maturation may happen in group 3. So what are the most distinct regions among these groups? We observed common delayed GMV development mostly in temporal areas in group 3 relative to group 1 and 2, and lower peak values in regions or among the less areas in the brain to mature and implicated in executive functions in group 2 relative to group 1. Next, we examine differences in neurocognition and the risk for neuropsychiatric disorders among groups. Compared to group 1, group 3 showed worse neurocognitive performances, mainly in spatial working memory and the Cambridge gambling test at baseline. But most of these items improved over time with brain maturation. In contrast, Group 2 showed worsened neurocognitive performance in some CGT measures and less follow-up relative baseline. As for risks for neuropsychiatric disorders, we observed this decreased ADHD symptoms, but increased depression symptoms in Group 3 relative Group 1. This indicated that although neurocognitive abilities in Group 3 improved during adolescence, this was not necessarily the case for mental disorder symptoms. Furthermore, we observed increased depression symptoms in group 2, which may indicate biology, social, and mental disadvantages among these adolescents. In addition, we calculated PRS for ADHD using external GWAS summary statistics. Group 3 had higher PRS for ADHD than both group 1 and 2, this leads us to ask whether genetic variants could explain the delayed neurodevelopment and neurocognitive performance in this group. Due to limited sample size of imaging, we used ABCD data to answer this question. We estimated a proxy phenotype. Here's how it was calculated. For example, we wish to compare group 3 and group 1. We began by calculating the region-specific weight in discriminating these two groups in imaging, adjusting for potential confounders such as age, and apply these weights to corresponding regions in VCD to obtain the reweighted green matter volume. Because of the similar results comparing group 3 with 1, 2 in figure P, we combine group 1 and 2 to a single group, and we call it group 3 reweighted green matter volume. 
it's like a propensity of heavy late maturation of brain development. Two loci show genome-wide significant effects. One loci was located in CNPW, which was related with cortical volume and cognitive function by autoneurogenesis and apoptosis. Another loci was located in ADGRL3, implicating in neural guidance and was associated with intelligence, adventurousness, and ADHD. Next, we conducted validation of the group 3 G1 results back in Majin. We began by calculating the PRS for SNPs residing in CNPW, which we will call CNPW score later and across the whole genome, and we call it uh, just PRS. We observed both higher score in group 3 relative to group 1, 2, and positive correlation between scores and neurocognition and conduct problem improvements in imaging. Because of the large overlap between the neurodevelopmental patterns and homogeneous genetic liability in group 1 2, we may reason that the differences in group 1 and 2 were quantitative and might be influenced by environmental exposure. To test this, we performed EWAT imaging using group membership at the phenotype and identified a significant hypermediation site mapped to ADF2 and MIR933. ATF2 was found to be associated with both neurodegeneration and neurogenesis. MIR933 offers neuroprotection against neurodegenerative diseases by regulating brain derived neurotrophic factor. Consistent with, with this uh, GWAS results, positive correlation between this site, the methylation level of this site, and total GMV trajectory and the negative correlation between it and peak GMV was observed in figure B. A preliminary analysis revealed that group 2 had depleted family information. Thus, we did a mediation analysis. A significant mediation effect was observed along the family information brain development pathway. To test whether and to what degree, Delayed neurodevelopment during adolescence could have impact on the long-term outcomes. We calculated the PRS and CMPW score using group 3 GWAS results for UKP participants. We correlated them with outcomes of interest. Since it was easy to obtain significant results in UKB due to the large sample size, we conducted non-superiority tests of the correlation coefficients. I found that these correlations were all smaller than 0.05. This indicated that long-term influences on the cognitive, mental health, and socioeconomic outcomes were limited once neurocognitive abilities were fully developed. To sum up, our study identified three groups with distinct structural brain developmental patterns and may have some policy implications. For example, attempt to build healthy family relationship during childhood and early infection to avoid the continued deterioration of worsened behavioral problems and mental symptoms were needed for adolescents in group two. As for group three, educational program needed need to be tailored to accommodate their delayed neurodevelopment before their brain fully matured. Thanks for listening.